Well, if you want to get more performance out of an Arrow Lake CPU, be it a Core Ultra 5 245K, Core Ultra 7 265K, or even a Core Ultra 9 285K, memory tuning and in general tuning the part of the CPU which has to do with memory is the most important thing because the only issue with this architecture, which is actually a lot better than the previous one for performance and for capabilities, is it has an added latency to the memory controller without getting too much into depth. It is architectural because now it's separate clusters which are being glued together. So the memory controller is no longer basically with the cores. It's a bit tricky. That means if you get good RAM, tune it well, you can get a lot of performance for basically free. And it's what we're doing here today. Now, main disclaimer is going to be that uh, this is not a complete DDR5 RAM timings guide because to do that, I would need to take basically one hour of this video and make the same video that Buildzoid makes pretty much. And there are also people who are much better than me, like him, for those kind of videos. This is just a quick guide to get some free performance out of your RAM quickly. And also, if you're seeing this before actually buying your RAM, CU DIMM RAM is absolutely worth it on this platform because if you get CU DIMM kits, you can then easily run high frequency. Now, I recommend you try and go at around 7600 megahertz if you can, 7200 megahertz minimum to get some gains. So what we have here today is two different kits. First kit is the one from this build, which you will find on the channel, and it's just some very good Team Group T-Force Extreme 7600 megahertz RAM. And then I've got this. So this is a special kit. It's a Patriot Viper Extreme 5 Empower Limited Edition RAM rated for 8,000 megahertz. This is insanely good RAM, and literally you mount it into whatever PC with an MSI motherboard and a Core Ultra 7 or Core Ultra 9, and it will run out of the box at 8,000 megahertz. I've tested it on four different computers, and in all of them, it just ran with a single click at 8,000 megahertz with relatively tight timings, which is very good. Now, why do I have this here today is because I'm gonna show you guys the profile of this so you can copy this even though you haven't bought it because a lot of the price you pay you pay for the timings the voltages so I, i'm bringing to you basically the best kit on the market one of the best kits on the market and just show you the timings so you can copy them and again with a bit of the tweaks i'm going to show you you're going to be able to get more performance out of your kit so with that said let's go into bios but before promise me one thing okay so if in the end the video is going to be helpful. You're going to get some, some performance. You will drop a like and subscribe, but after you finish. Okay, I don't want it now, but later. Latest disclaimer, of course, this is done in the BIOS. And this works for every motherboard, literally. Any model, MSI, Gigabyte, ASUS, ASRock, whatever. But the names are going to be a bit different if you have a different motherboard. I have an MSI one just because, uh, but... Uh, I'm going to try to tell you where to find stuff in different BIOSes as well, okay? So... Let's go in the BIOS, let's start tweaking. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is to have your XMP enabled, Extreme Memory Profile. That's basically gonna run your RAM at your RAM speed, the one you paid for. But after you enable it, you wanna test this out separately because if this is unstable, we cannot move forward the tutorial, or better, we can, but we have to know this is unstable because if not, then you're gonna think tutorial doesn't work, but it's actually this unstable. That said, let's go into the advanced option, which is my BIOS, it's F7. And then we wanna go into the overclocking tab, which may be called OC Tweaker, OC Tuner, AI Tweaker, AI Tuner, something along those lines. One latest thing, if you wanna get maximum performance, you should also undervolt or overclock your CPU. Uh, for both cases, I have tutorials on the channel, so you may wanna copy them. But anyways, first two things we want to change, which are literally free performance, okay, are gonna be the NGU ratio and CPU D to D ratio okay now get ready for these we want to start just very safe okay and we want to go on the ngu ratio and put 32 and on the d2d we want to put also 32. now you want to then save your settings go into windows test it out see if it's stable then come back but this is going to work for every single one of you this can give you anywhere from 5 to 20 percent free performance just like this crazy crazy but try it it's true like literally, XMP enabled, you do this free performance. If you want to push it a bit more, this one can go up to 34 and this one to 33 usually. I find for higher, you will need more voltage, which I don't 
like I don't like to recommend it, okay? So maximum 34, 33, but again, start with 32 on both. And let's get started. Now, let's go all the way down. And here you will see I have my memory profile at 7600 megahertz. If we go down, um, we'll find the gear ratio. Now, the gear ratio in my case is called CPU AMC to DRAM clock. But this, you want to make sure it's on gear 2 because this is free performance. Do not run this in gear 4. It's, it's lost performance. You can do it to push very high memory speed, but I don't recommend you do. Under advanced DRAM configuration, which in some motherboard is called memory timings, you will have the actual pro settings. So it's going to be all the timings over here. And now you just want to change these. You don't have to change other things. And now here, actually, what I would do Personally, if I was tweaking the RAM, is I would leave these as stock. So again, we have our XMP enabled. You, you tested the XMP. So this is already your XMP of your RAM. So I would first leave these at stock and try to push the frequency. So I would first tune up the voltages, as I show you later, and then tighten the timings. But if you want to copy the timings, right now, I'm going to show you my timings. So the ones you're seeing at the moment are my timings for 7600 megahertz for the good kit, but not insanely good kit. And I'm going to show you them all. So you can just copy them if you want. So I'm just scrolling through. You can pause the video, take a look. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to put on the screen right now as I'm talking, I'm going to put the hardware info 64 of the worst of the two memory kits, which is this one. So you can also copy them from there if you want. And then what I'm going to do right now as I'm talking is I'm putting in overlay the RAM sticks from the very good Patriot Viper RAM. Literally one click and it's gonna run on CPU-Z. I'm also gonna, gonna show you that. So if you wanna copy them, copy them from here. Timings, we are not going too deep into this video, okay? So just give it a nice look, then let's go back to what we can actually change. So what we can change is voltages. So let's go back to the overclocking tab. Let's go into the voltage tab. And now I'm gonna tell you guys my guidelines for it. Here are the maximum voltages I recommend. Now, I recommend you take a top-down approach. So you start with the highest voltage. And then once you find stability, you just lower your voltage as much as possible. This is how I personally do RAM tuning. System agent, override mode. And now system agent, I am comfortable with up to a 1.45 volt. Okay, so again, this is maximum. You don't want to run your RAM 24-7 with this. But you want to put it to test and then lower it. I need to stress this thing, but it's very important, okay? You wanna just start from it and go down. So the, the VCC system agent is the one you actually need. The SOC system agent, you shouldn't need to change, let's say. If you have to, put them both to 1.45. Now the NGU voltage, again, override, this you should not need to change. So do not put this, but if you're finding instability, you may wanna put 0 0.95 to start. And then I would go probably all the way up to 1.1 if needed. Wouldn't really go higher with this. But you probably don't need this. So you can also leave it on auto. That's what I recommend you do. Now we go down and we actually start with our memory voltage. So for VDD2, I recommend a maximum of 1.45. You can go up to 1.5, but you need to be a bit crazy to do it. For VDDQ, same thing. So I want to say 1.5 maximum, but in my case, probably 1.475 is going to be plenty fine. And realistically, 1.45 you're going to be happy with. Now, DRAM voltage, of course, you can go all the way up to 1.5. Some people are pushing 1.55, which I think may be a little bit on the higher side. But again, for a quick test, maybe fine. Maybe. Now, you do not need to change anything else aside from this. However, you... Again, I can't stress this enough. Sorry if I'm being a bit redundant. You do not want to run these voltages for daily usage. They are too high. I do not take responsibility in you running too high of voltages. This is just upper limit, which I would be comfortable with for testing. Meaning, if even with this, your PC is not stable, you need to lower your frequency or relax your timings. Okay, so this is the absolute maximum. Then you want to go ahead and one by one, try to lower it, test for stability. So for example, lower this, test for stability then lower the next one, test for stability, etc. It's, it's a pretty long process. It's not a quick preset. If you want to just copy a quick preset, I recommend again, you change 
the NGU, the D2D, you put the XMP, you maybe try my timings, and that's it. If you want just a quick and easy performance, if you want to spend a bit more time, this is how you do it. And with this video for today is over. And I hope it was helpful. As usual in my videos, I'd really like it if the comment section became a place where we can discuss actually uh, which settings works for you, which one doesn't, so we can help each other out. So if you want, please drop a comment. And also, if the video was helpful, remember your promise and maybe drop a like and actually subscribe for more. And I hope to see you guys again in another video. Bye-bye.